Olá, Deus te abençoe. Hello, God bless you. Thank God. Welcome to the Live Chain Today program. Thank you so much for being there. And may God bless you very much. Your home, your family, your weekend. May it be amazing. And may you have a really, a truly blessed schedule with your beautiful family is starting with the table. Go to the table. Pray together. Talk. Have communion. Intimacy. Grow together. Touch each other. Look into each other's eyes. Say more. I love you. May your life be a powerful life in Jesus' name. And, and I pray for this. So, may you and your family grow in Jesus, advance, yes, from, fa from faith to faith, from glory to glory, trusting in the Lord, because everything we build in Him, it's secure. If you build out of God, there is no security, but everything that is built in God, it endures, it's safe, it's stable, and it's always growing. Because life with God is like this. It's a continuous growth. It's always developing for better advancing. I've never seen it different. Never. Those who really walk with God, they are always growing, developing, progressing. When the cloud moved in that journey, on the desert, in the desert, it was always to lead people It was always to bring the people closer to the promised land. The cloud moved. They moved a little further to the land. They broke camp and moved a little further. They broke camp and moved a little further. That's the way, that's the life of those who really walk with God who is rooted in God, on God, grounded on God. They are always, God is always leading them to more, to a higher place. And they are always growing. Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. That's why we don't need, just like Jesus said, to be worried. We just need to seek Him first. Cast your anxiety on Him. A person who re is really walking with Jesus, they don't give place to anxiety because they cast everything in the Lord, on the Lord. They know in whom they have believed. I know in whom I'm believing, in who I'm believing. I know in who I'm believing. Isn't it what Paul said? I know. I know in who I'm believing. So I'm secure. And what did Job say? I know that my Redeemer lives. And what did David say? I know that I'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You see that every person who walks with God, they have a life with God, relationship with God, intimacy with God, they speak with conviction. I know. I know that I'll see God's glory. I know in whom I have, I have been believing. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know. 
I know who God is. I know. Why didn't Abraham deny Isaac? Because he trusted so much in God. He knew God in a level that the Bible says it's not me. That he was, he was sure that God would resurrect Isaac. He would bring him back, but he would never, he will, but he will never fail to fulfill the promise. People, I speak this word, I talk about this word, and when I'm meditating on it, it wasn't just a few times that I got emotional, I cried. And I asked this for God, I want this faith. I want help me to grow and to reach this level where I doubt everything, but I don't doubt you, Lord. I doubt my feelings, thoughts, circumstances, what I'm seeing, but I don't doubt the Lord. You can ask me the most absurd thing, and I will still trust. And that's what, what the Lord asked for Abraham. It was absurd. That was an absurd thing. Give me your son. Get up, go to Moriah and sacrifice your son, your only son. Sacrifice it for me. Give me. Surrender it. It was an absurd request and he trusted. He believed. So, if it doesn't move you, look. So, we need to see your faith again. You need to see your faith again because we must go to this place where we doubt everything, but not God. It doesn't matter what He asks us. He can ask whatever He wants. Even though we'll continue convict and we'll be able to surrender because a person who has this intimacy with God, they trust in God, they know God, those who know they are God, they are not deceived. Let us know, let us press on knowing the Lord because this is a process that won't stop, that doesn't stop. And the more you know God, the more you trust in Him, the more you surrender yourself. And there's no doubt that His faithfulness is eternal, that He won't fail, that He's a present God, and that there's no possibility, there isn't any possibility for him to leave us, forsaken us, to fail. Abraham was sure that God was with him, that he wouldn't fail, that the, fi the promise wouldn't fail. God knew what he was doing, so um, I'll trust, I throw myself. What a faith, radical faith, aggressive faith. He was full in the Lord. He threw himself in God completely. He took his son that the only that God himself said that you love so much. Give it to me. Surrender to me. And we know that when God asks, requires Isaac, he wants Abraham. He wants to know where our heart is because the eyes of the Lord range through God the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are full in Him. And when the Lord is, is passing and searching and the one who searches finds, does He find in you this whole heart? This heart that is capable to please Him. And what is the only way to please Him? Believing in Him. Why did Abraham become the father of faith? Because he believed in the Lord. He believed. He believed so much 
that he didn't hesitate to give the only his only son. He gave to God. And when he prepared everything, the altar, he put the wood, he laid the boy down and tied him up. He raised the cleaver and, and he was going to kill his son. And the voice of the angel came and said, Abraham, don't touch in the boy. Now I know. Now it's God. Now I know that you fear me because you didn't deny your only son. People, this is too powerful. This is too powerful. Now I know. Now it's God who knows. Now I know. It came out that you really fear me, that you trust in me because you didn't hesitate. You didn't deny your only son. God said to him, and the Bible says that in the next morning, very early, Early, he got up with everything he needed to that sacrifice. He walked for three days until the moment that he arrived at the, the place that God said, Mount Moriah, he prepared the altar, he prepared the altar, he put the wood, he laid the boy down, he tied him up. It means, it's obvious he didn't make anything based on impulse. He made by conviction. He was sure he had conviction. And an important point is that he said to his servants, stay here because I'll go to worship with the boy and we'll come back. He was sure that he wouldn't he wouldn't come back alone, that God will do something, but the promise God wouldn't let it fail, wouldn't allow it fail. To give Isaac, it meant to finish, to end up with everything. Everything would end because the promise would be fulfilled through Isaac, his descendant. But look at an amazing thing. When you fear God more than losing anything, he feared God more than failing to keep the promise or losing his son. He feared God in the highest level. And God is calling all of us to this level of faith where we believe in him, where we surrender ourselves without any reservations. And his eyes reigned throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully in him. Searching for people who are able to trust in him. To obey him in the highest level without any reservations. People who really fear the Lord. They are available, willing to everything because of Him. Are you this person? Who is able, who is willing, available to everything because of Him? Are you capable to give everything to please Him, to honor Him? Huh? Because faith without deeds is dead. To say that you have faith and you don't have deeds, it doesn't make any sense. Look at this. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Can it? Faith without deeds is useless. I will also ask them to put it here. What do your deeds reveal about your faith? 
Faith and deeds are inseparable, and faith manifests itself through the actions we take. Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? Is it only words? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me? Look what James said. Show me. How can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. It's a matter of, no, but God knows my heart. God knows my heart. He knows how I love him. But the person isn't able to sacrifice, to renounce anything, to sacrifice for anything. There's no surrender of life, donation of life. You don't see attitudes of renounce and sacrifice. In the law of the first mention, the first time that the word worship appears in the Bible, it is in this context. When Abraham took Isaac, it means that worship is a sacrificial surrender. And we were called to live this life of worship, of sacrificial surrender, where in the smallest things we glorify God. Paul said, whether you eat or drink, do all, everything, all is all, even eat and drink to the glory of God. How can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I'll show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there's one God good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. Look, how foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor, Abraham, Abraham, was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Did you forget this detail? James asked. You see, his faith and his actions worked together. If I really love God, I obey him. If God is everything for me, I prove it, I show it with deeds. If God is important to me, and he's, he's my priority, because my priorities, they reveal where my heart is. You see, his faith and his actions work together. His actions made his faith complete. Faith is not complete if there aren't deeds. If God isn't my priority, I never have time for God. I give to God. But we see Cain giving. What was left? from his harvest, the rest. And giving what he wanted to give, he didn't give what he had to give, and he gave, in the end, it says that in the end, right? After some days, he gave a, an offering to the Lord. And some people live like this. And then, and then they are angry, asking, why am I not having answers? But they give what they want. 
Do you remember that Gideon gave his offering that was a lamp and God received it? But then God asked what he wanted that was a seven-year-old ox, the second seven-year-old ox from his father, and that he would tear down the altar of Baal and that he would build an altar to the Lord. So, let's go. Some people, they give what they want when they want the way they want. They do in their own way. Faith is not complete. Here, look. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed and believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. To say that I have faith, faith, I have faith, and sometimes the person really believes, but there are no deeds. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she heed those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. She showed that she really believed through the risk that she took. She risked her life because of this faith. She had actions, deeds, radical deeds, powerful, just as the body is dead without breath. So also faith is dead without good works. So, if we really believe, we prove it through actions, deeds, attitudes, decisions, courageous, radical, generous attitudes, we renounce. We override what we are feeling, our real. Wasn't it what Jesus did? My Father, if it is possible, maybe may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. It means it's not what I want, it's what you, Lord, wants that must prevail. This is the complete faith. A complete faith is what changes the life of a person and leads them to progress and to ride in the heights of the, the earth. We saw complete faith in Nehemiah. He not only felt sorry for that people, he felt, no. He prayed, he fasted for four months, and he sacrificed his comfort, his convenience, and he broke through. He left a beautiful place where he had security, and he went to an ugly place, destroyed place, to raise, to raise the walls, believing that he could do something that nobody did before. And in 52 days, he changed the story of that place. Because his faith was a complete faith, a faith with deeds, with deeds, a faith with sacrifice, renounce, surrender. He moved his own structure. He, he took it out of him in every way. Time, money, you see, all of this, he sacrificed his life, everything. To, to do something that the Lord placed in his heart. And he understood that it was God's will. This is the complete faith. If you want a great life, learn with Nehemiah, Abraham, and many others. Faith is not complete. It isn't alive. If there is no deed, 
sacrificial deeds, renounce, courage, determination, perseverance. Let's go. Come on. God called us to a complete faith. He wants us complete, full in Him so He can show His strength. Understand this and surrender yourself completely and you'll see the glory of God as you have never seen before. If you believe, desire, and want to pray with me, prepare something you want to receive prayer for. I'll be right back to pray with you. Senhor, meu Deus e meu... Lord, my God and my Father, I pray for it to dear life that is with me, and I ask, may this word have given them understanding, discernment, clarity, and may they act with wisdom. The, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and wisdom has two hands. In the right hand, she gives us longevity, and in the left hand, she gives us riches and honor. All they need, all they need, they will find in you, Lord. So to fear the Lord, that's the reason that to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To walk by faith is the proof of wisdom. A faith with deeds, with actions, shows that we chose the path of wisdom. And I pray, so may today, so may they understand today that it is a complete faith, a faith with deeds that changes our lives. If I say that I believe, I prove it with deeds. May they understand it. May they get up today, decided to live a complete life and consequently, Glorious results. Bless homes, families, all who sent their prayer requests. I consecrate everything and I take possession of changes, definitions, understanding, clarity, wisdom, intelligence, vision. I bless my friends and fellow sowers. I prophesy the gift of wealth, prosperity, an anointing of conquest, an anointing of ten times more. Raise more sowers because we need them. And wherever this program is reaching, may lives have been deeply touched and may they have already gotten up with decisions, firm, courageous decisions for the glory of your name. I bless your people and I thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you so much. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God. The Life Helpline phone number is 5511-3296-984-49. We are located at 995 Taquari Street in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's where we are today. The cry out in prayer of the 52 days at 7 and midday. Tomorrow, the Lord's Communion, the consecration of tithers. The fast for the maintenance of my conquest projects, and that's our going to live. From glory to glory, from victory to victory, get up and come, bring your family, a guest, and let's worship God. Count on us. It is always a pleasure to serve, and if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back, I will continue here talking about life and life change. Have a nice day. Amen.